Check. Check. I'll open for a quarter. I'm in. I'll see your quarter, and I'll raise you a quarter. By the way, Rose, your shoe is untied. <laughs> I'm too smart for you, Sophia. You're not going to distract me this time. Besides, I'm wearing pumps. <laughs> your pump is untied. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Look, Mr. Feinbaum's totally naked in his bedroom window. <laughs> That is the third time we caught you cheating. Ma, you're out of the game. Hey, give me a break. When you're 80, you're allowed to cheat, just like you're allowed to take money out of your daughter's purse. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, was that the phone? Uh, don't trouble yourselves. I'll get it. <laughs> How did you know your mother was cheating, uh, Dorothy? Because Mr. Feinbaum never walks around totally naked. <laughs> He always wears a Boy Scout neckerchief. <laughs> but never in the same place twice. Which is why there's no Mrs. Feinbaum, dear. Oh, did you see that, Dorothy? There was a UFO. Oh, Rose, don't be ridiculous. It was a plane. Deal. Come on. Planes don't fly over residential neighborhoods. Neither do UFOs. They only fly over empty fields in Kentucky. <laughs> We're fat guys in overalls named Cooley have just run out of gas. I think we ought to call the authorities. Rose, there was no such thing as a UFO. They were probably looking for someone to bring up to the ship. Fine, now you stay out here, flag them down if they fly by again. I'll go inside and pack a bag. But I want to be the one to go. Whose bag do you think I'm going to pack? <laughs> Blanche, are you in a good mood? <laughs> Neither you always could see right through me. <laughs> Keep it up with those chips, ahoy, and Superman couldn't see right through me. <laughs> I just got off the phone with Ham Lushbow, who happens to be the most charming, most intelligent, most gorgeous, most sexy man on the face of this entire planet. We went to college together. Look, there's his picture. Wow, oh. he sure is handsome. Oh. Yeah, what did he have to say? Oh that he's in town on business and that he's single again and that he'd love to be my date for the museum ball Saturday night. The museum ball? Didn't Roger Clark postpone his kidney transplant so he could be your date? What's your poem? Sorry to interrupt. Go on. Well, Dorothy, you have no idea how my sister Virginia and I used to chase after this boy. Well, everybody did. He had it all. Football star, champion debater, class valedictorian. How long did you and he date? Well, we didn't. But it wasn't because I didn't try. Oh. I can still remember the night of the big rally before the homecoming game. Oh, there stood Ham, just handsome as ever. I walked over to him and ask him the one question that had been burning on my tongue for the last four years. Ham, think you might like a little company tonight? <laughs> you know what he said? Maybe some other time, Blanche. Can you believe that? Maybe some other time. Blanche, that doesn't seem so mean. He had the band spell it out on the field. <laughs> And Dorothy, to this day, Ham Lushbell remains the one man in my entire life I could not conquer. The one. But come Saturday night, I have a feeling my record's going to be intact again. <laughs> I wouldn't be so sure if I were Blanche. Sometimes these things aren't meant to be. Like me and Fabrizio Rubino. <laughs> We were on the verge of a passionate love affair when Destiny intervened. Don't tell me. His wife, Destiny Rubino. Why, boy, did she have a temper. She dragged him away by the hair on his back. 